Well, hello, everybody. It's so good to see you from the comfort of your home today. Come on, drop a comment and say amen. I'm just so not used to hearing the the rumble of everybody saying amen to, to God is good, and he is meeting us in this time. Hey, for anybody tuning in right now that, that doesn't know me yet, my name is Elliot. My wife, Tiffany, and I, we have the privilege of pastoring this group of people called Lifeline Church, and we're so glad that you're joining us today. Even though I don't get to meet you in person, I believe that one thing is still true. Even though we're all at home today, even though you're all joining us at home, there is one thing, at least, that hasn't changed, and that is that God has a message for you. He has a message of hope, encouragement, and love that he wants to speak into your life today. And if you believe that, type amen. I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna get used to this telling jokes and nobody's laughing. I got the band. They're gonna laugh. Can you guys laugh extra loud, the band? Come on. Yeah, you hear them. <laughs> okay, go ahead and congratulate and thank the band for, for being here uh, and providing a service, even though we're, we're doing our best to um, honor our officials, honor our government, and really honor everyone around us who is wanting to stay safe during this time. I believe God has a message of hope, encouragement, and love. He wants to speak into your life today, and you are not tuning in by accident. So we are going to be online for a little while, just a quick update. We're going to be online for uh, just the next few weeks, but to be honest with you, uh, news changes so quickly these days that I have a hard time putting a time frame on it. Just go ahead and keep tuning in. Keep sharing whatever information we share. Uh, Day by day, things change. So we're going to continue to share those updates as soon as they come in. You know, it, it has a tendency to be a fearful time right now. And it makes me think right now, as I think I have a slide for this, um, it makes me think right now about how I lost my finger. You know, it was a scary time for me. It really was. And this one right here, I don't know if you guys can see it. Uh, too well, but I did end up losing this finger a few years back, and uh, I remember being really scared. You, you know um, how it happened was what happened was it was it was ninjas. It was ninjas, you know, because uh, I was just walking down the street, minding my own business one day, and and these ninjas they come straight out of the trees, you know, and they come down on their on their their zip line, and they they say to me, "Give me all your money." And of course, I responded, there's no way. And they start throwing their ninja stars, and they're throwing them and throwing them, and I'm dodging them like Neo, dodging them, and then just one of them, okay, that's not true. Okay, that's not true. The real thing that happened was, was, is that it was a shark. It was, it was definitely a shark that, that took, because, you know, I was vacationing in Hawaii that one time. I was vacationing in Hawaii that one time, and there was this beautiful blonde named Tiffany out there in the water. And I thought, oh, man, if I could just somehow reach out to her. And then next thing you know, I hear screaming, ah, ah, and it was sharks. It was sharks swimming all around her. So what do I do? Of course, the only thing a good pastor would do, I swim out there and I start going underwater and I start Leonardo DiCaprio punching those sharks in the face. Punching one after, uh, 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 and then the last one comes up. And I uppercut that thing right in the jaw and there's like 3,000 teeth flying everywhere. And it, okay, well that, that didn't happen. But the real thing that happened was, it was a pair of twin pit bulls. That's right. That's right. A pair of twin pit bulls come running out of the room, and, and they're, they're attacking this baby, and I'm like, let those babies go. Okay, that's not true either. That's not, that's not true either. Um, but maybe it was another way. Um, in fact, why don't you, well, let's have some fun. As long as we're online, can we just have a little bit of fun? Um, let's have a little bit of fun and go to the next one here. Um, this is not a touch screen. Oh, there it goes. <laughs> I'm pretending like it's a touch screen. Um, let's put the most creative. If you have a creative story, um, I'm not saying I'm going to steal it or anything, but maybe. But the most creative story, I- I'll think of something to give you. I'll think of something to give you because, because I- I'm running low on stories. Any of you who know me, I've been telling those two, three, four lame stories for a long time now. And I, I wanted to start up with that, with that 
because with some laughs, you know, everybody cooped up at home, it feels good to get a laugh or two in. But you know, um, regardless of how it happened, because I'm not going to tell you how it happened, but regardless of how it happened, let me tell you what I felt like. Let me tell you what I felt like when, when it did happen. When I lost this finger, I felt like I'm not going to be able to play guitar anymore. I felt like I'm not gonna be able to play piano if I wanted to learn that. I'm not gonna be able to play drums anymore. I'm not gonna be able to, well, I still can't type very well. But the fear of what might be started creeping into my mind. Come on, show of hands in the comments. This is crazy. I'm gonna get used to this. I am. Show of hands in the comments. Who, who's ever been afraid of what might be? And I think th th some people say the root of all evil is, is, is money, but it's actually the love of money. But I, I think the root of all fear is what, what might be, what, what might happen. Isn't that true? Like, I don't know what's going to happen, and that's why I'm afraid. I'm afraid because, because I'm not sure how things are going to pan out. I'm not sure how things are going to go. The fear of what might be is king. And so what I want to give you today, what I want to give you today is a few points that are going to help you, like the title of this message goes, How to Be Fearless. How to Be Fearless. And so let's start the same way the Apostle Paul does with a little bit of theology around this. And all theology means is, is, is a biblical understanding. It's a godly understanding of a topic. That's what theology means. And so I want to start like him, and I just want to drop a couple truth bombs on you. The first being out of Psalm 53. Psalm 53, it goes like this. We're going to get this, guys. But when I am afraid, when I'm afraid, I will put my trust in you. Notice how, notice how that goes. When I am afraid, I will put my trust in you. I praise God for what he has. He's, he's made some promises to you. He's made some promises. Next one. And it goes like this. I trust in God. So why should Notice what's going on here. Trust and fear, what might be. Didn't we talk about this? It's what might be. But if I trust in God in what might be, what if what might be is one of the greatest things? What if what might be is this, this problem turned into a solution? I trust in God, so why should I be afraid? What can mere mortals do to me? Notice how the answer to fear in this passage is not strength, it's not even knowledge. The Bible is not asking us to have strength or to have knowledge. He's asking us to just trust. Just trust that things are going to be okay. That things are going to be okay. I got one worship team member saying amen to me. And I'm going to have to deal with what I get around here. You hear, maybe you can hear him. I don't know. It's like, I can't hear you from your living room. So it's like, preacher's got to learn how to just go with it. It's going to be good. Let's go to Psalm, Psalm 34. Let's check this out. I got another one for you. It says, I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all of my, okay, hang on just one second. I prayed to the Lord and he answered me. He freed me from all my fears. This is not in your notes, but the Bible says that those who seek him will find him. Those who seek him will find him. Let me ask you an honest question. How much of this have we been doing right now? Have we been doing a lot of this? Or have we been doing a lot of, hmm, I need to figure things out, hmm, I need to, and there's nothing wrong with thinking, there's nothing wrong with doing any of that, but are we here? Are we starting here? Is this our, our first response? Or is this our last resort? This is where we want to be right here. I prayed to the Lord, and he answered me. He freed me from all of my fears. Come on, somebody. That is a good word. We need to start with prayer, and we need to just lean in right here and say, I prayed to the Lord, and he's going to answer you. He is going to answer you. Let's go to this next one, because this is my favorite one. In, out of uh, 2 Timothy chapter 1, um, let's go to it. This is, my, this, is, this is really actually where we're going to spend the rest of our time together is this, this answer to the question, how do I become fearless? How do I become fearless? It actually lives in this verse. And so this is the first half of it. I want to talk about this. For God has not, not given us a spirit of fear and timidity. Now, hang on right there. Hang on. Because if I'm not mistaken, 
it might sound like God is just telling us, or Paul, who's writing through the inspiration of God in this book, he's just saying, well, just don't be afraid. You know, just, just don't be afraid. Like, well, just, just don't, just stop. Have you ever got counsel like that before? Like you actually went to a friend, you actually went to a pastor, you actually went to a counselor, and you say, you know, I'm really struggling with this one thing. And they say, well, I got news for you. Stop it. Uh, um, if I could do that, then I wouldn't be asking you for any help on the matter. But I don't know how to just stop it. So can you help me tell me how? If we're not careful, we might think this passage is telling us just well, if you're afraid, you must not have the Spirit of God in you. No, 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 no. I, 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 would, I would rather take another approach to that. And, and through reading the whole verse, I think there's a much more biblical response. That God has actually given us an answer to this question of how do I do this? Like, I don't want to just fake it. I don't want to fake that I have the Spirit of God in me. I don't want to fake that uh, I'm, I'm not afraid. Oh, yeah, nope, not afraid. And inside, you're like, <laughs> so afraid, but you're just trying to have that. The, the, the time of life, the season in the world where plastic Christian faces, that's over. Okay, we're done with that. We don't need that. I don't need fake smiles. I don't need everyone to walk into this place when you start walking in again. When you start, I don't need everyone to be happy on the outside. I don't need everybody, and granted, there's a time and a place to share everything, but I don't need in. we don't need to be fake, because that doesn't help anybody. We don't need to thank you. We don't need to pretend that everything is just fine. We don't need to pretend that I'm not dealing with any fear, any doubt. You know, I've been seeing a lot of things out there lately. I've been seeing a lot of, a lot of people posting and, and being, it almost feels mean. Like, if you're afraid, you're, you're somehow sub-Christian. You, don't, you must not have faith then because you, you have a bit of fear in you. Well, hang on just a second. Can, can I respond to that and say, well, maybe God has given us a way out of fear. That it's not just some magic pill we take and we just don't feel it anymore. No, there's actually a way. And let's talk about that. Lane, let's go to that next one right here because the answer lies right here. This is, the, this is the spirit he's given us. A power, love, and self-discipline. This, to me, is our way out. This is our way out of fear. This is us not having to live in fear anymore. Okay, he hasn't given me a spirit of fear. What has he given me? Power, love, self-discipline. So for the rest of our time together, I want to talk about walking in this. How do we, how do we walk in power, love, and self-discipline? What, what can I do to put one foot in front of the other? Pastor, preacher, can you please tell me how I can walk, out, walk this out? Yes, I would be glad to tell you. And it starts right here with number one. Write this down somewhere. Take a note. Number one is stay active. This is a spirit of power, to stay, to stay active. God literally, God literally built our bodies to feel better after physical activity. Now, this might sound a little simplistic to you, but I'm telling you, this is real life. This is, God made your body just as much as he made your mind and your spirit and everything else about you. He formed it. So it doesn't do us any good to ignore our body's actual signs so what I'm trying to tell you is we want to walk in a spirit of power, which just means to stay active, everybody. I, I need you to stay active if you want to be. Let me put it this way. Um, over the last week or so, uh, I haven't been, you know, getting out as much. They closed my gym. I'm mean, I just I'm out of here. They closed my gym, y'all. What? Y'all looking at me like, oh, well, his metabolism, duh, buh, buh. miss me with that. Okay, miss me with all that. Five days a week in the gym. That's how, yeah, metabolism that, okay, five days, okay? And I have not gone to the gym once this week. Let me just tell you, I don't feel the same. <laughs> I feel a little different. I feel a little bit more sluggish. I just don't feel as sharp. And let me just say, from experience, we, we've got to address that head on. And we've, if we think that's not going to uh, affect your spiritual life, it, it, it will. It really will. 
um, and I need to go ahead and take extra walks and, and do all this. I got a scripture for you out of 1 Corinthians. It goes like this. It starts in, in chapter 6, verse 19. It says, don't you realize that your body, your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? So just as, just as the Spirit has importance and, and God's Spirit in us and our, our, our mind, will, emotion, our soul, but what about the temple? Man, if the temples broke down and we're not staying active during this whole thing, then let me tell you, um, temp, that Holy Spirit is going to start leaking out of your crumbling walls. <laughs> I'm telling you, it has, it has an impact. It really does. Physical activity. Temple of the Holy Spirit who lives in you and was given to you by God. So God is saying what you do or don't do with your body can have an effect on your mental and, and, and spiritual state, absolutely. I want you to lean in to the spirit of, that God has given you and, and do these two things. Lane, let's put these two things we need to do up here and say, every day I want you to exercise. This, this is pastoral advice. I'm not a trainer. I, I am not employed or endorsed by any gym anywhere. This is pastoral advice. Every day, I, I don't know if it's going to be a, a walk that you take or a run. I don't know about you, but I see more joggers and walkers and bike riders right now. It's like all you had to do was put a shelter in place law in effect, and we're like, well, I'm out of here. I'm, out, I'm, I'm leaving. It's like that's get America fit again right there. Is, uh, all you got to do is put a law that they can't exercise, and they're like, well, forget that. I'm going outside. Um, <laughs> listen to the law, everybody. Um, every day I want you to exercise. That, get your steps in. Man, I got my thing working for me. Get your steps in. My step count has been dismal. Dismal to say the least, but we got to work at it. And this is another part that's really important. I, I need you to be productive every day. If you want to really stay powerful with a spirit of power, with the spirit of power that, that the Bible talks about, it is, it is up to us in part to, to move in that direction and meet God there to say, I, I'm going to do something. Because once you do, you're going to feel a lot better. Do a couple sit-ups, do you a walk or do something, you're going to feel tons better. And then be productive. This could be anything from rearranging your garage to rearranging your workspace to... <laughs> rearranging your kids' space. Uh, that's all, like, I've got a three and a four-year-old, so. Oh, that reminds me. Evan, hello. Hope you're, my, th my three-year-old demanded that I say hello on the TV. He was thrilled I was going to be on TV saying hello. Evan, hi. Emma said she didn't want me to say anything. So, Emma, I love you too. Be productive. Clean up your kid's space. Rearrange your living room. Man, do something um, to stay productive and to stay, to stay active, all right? Practical stuff starting off that way. Number two is this. Let's put this up here. Number two is stay positive. Stay positive. Now, this one's really important, everybody. This one's really important. And this, this to me, I'm going a little out of order, but this to me speaks of the spirit of self-discipline. It is discipline to choose joy. It is discipline to say, you know what? I'm going to choose joy today. I'm going to choose to lean into this situation. I'm going to choose to look at this in such a way that this could be a blessing. That, my friends, is discipline. Another way to say it is this. This season is what you make it. Some of, some of us are thinking, like, we're just going to let this happen to us. Like, we're going to let the season happen, and, you know, I, I hope everything works out. But I want you to switch your thinking right now. This season is what you make it. I am going to choose to approach this season a little differently. It can be the worst time of your life, but it could also be the best time of your life if you choose that. This could be the time where you got so close with God and his word and your family and the, thing, the people you love. This could be the season where everything changes. This is like my favorite scripture the whole day. I hope you're really excited for it. It comes out of James chapter 1. It goes like this. When tr would you say any of us are going through any troubles right now? I'd say most of us are thinking, well, a troubling time. When troubles of any kind 
Can I emphasize that? Any kind, when troubles of any kind come your way, consider it, choose, discipline yourself, frame your thinking. This is not positive self-help booklet stuff, okay? This is the Bible telling us when there's trouble, consider it an opportunity. This is an opportunity for great joy. It, when troubles come here, in this season, consider it an opportunity for great joy. How many of us would honestly say that when everything hit, you know, like, you know what? This is awesome. I am, this is great. So glad all this is happening. This is an opportunity for great joy. Next verse goes like this. For you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. And that's a, that is a beautiful statement because that means no matter what season my life is in, no matter what I'm dealing with, no matter what I'm going through, that means that I can consider it a great joy and my endurance is going to grow. My faith is going to grow. Your faith is going to grow in this season if you choose joy. It's one of our values here at Lifeline. We choose joy. And we, we, we use that language very specifically because joy is not something that happens to us. It's something that, something that happens from us. We choose it. We choose joy. No, none of us have said, wow, this season is so great. You're such a great opportunity for, for learning, for perspective, for gratitude. Well, I'm, that's exactly what I'm asking you to do now. I'm asking you to, to look at this season, this situation with, with the shelter in place and the virus. And I'm not saying you have to celebrate people getting sick. <laughs> I'm not saying that. I'm saying no matter what we go through, this is one thing. It'll be another thing next year. It'll be a thing after that. Anytime, every time we are faced with something, we can choose joy. We can choose joy, and our, our faith will grow. If you are a follower of Jesus today, that means this is your greatest opportunity to minister to your friends to pray with your friends. They, they need you, want you more than they ever have before. I know it used to be, you know, Christmas or Easter or whatever. Forget all that. Christmas is great. Easter is great. The time is now. The time is right now. Better than Easter, better than Christmas. Your friends are starving for an encouraging word. I, I'm, I am deputizing you. I'm knighting you all right now through cyberspace. There's my, my sword, and I'm going ding, ding. I'm deputizing you all right now to, to go and minister to your friends. Don't wait on me to do it. I don't even know them. They, they are hungry for what you have to give, and you have so much life to give. You have so much love to give, joy, encouragement, hope. You know, all you have to do, hey, just reach out to your friend. Get on your phone, send them a text, send them a whatever, and say, is there anything that I could be praying for you about right now? I'm guessing nine out of 10 are gonna say, yeah, pray for my blank. Pray for, but yeah, they're, they're gonna say yes. They're gonna say yes. This is your opportunity, everybody, to, to stay positive and look at what an opportunity we have that a whole new generation could be coming into the faith right now as we speak. This is not a great depression. Uh, no, this is a great revival that's coming forth, and I, and I consider it all joy. See it as an opportunity for your faith to grow. And if you are seeking, if you're tuning in right now and you, you wouldn't consider yourself a Jesus follower and you're just kind of seeking around, I don't know, I, I am kind of interested, but I'm not sure, I don't know, I've never, this is your opportunity too. This is everyone's opportunity. This is your opportunity right here and right now to taste and see to taste and see that as the Bible says, that the Lord is good. He really is. And I'm inviting you all really to, to taste and see. To try to just take a step towards God and see that he doesn't meet you right there. Amen, everybody? Amen. In fact, in my worship team was like, amen. There's like three of them. I'm like, okay. 
in my, it was actually in, just to piggyback off of that thought, it was in my darkest place that I, that I found the light. Many of you know, some of you don't, that I spent time in jail. I was looking at major time for a, for a little season, and it went, it went, I was at my lowest point in my whole life. My darkest place is actually where I found the light. Haven't you ever noticed that in a really, really, really dark room, you can even see that little tiny PlayStation light. You know, it's like this big, it's red, and it's just barely, gl- but in a dark room, you can see even a little bit of light. Hey, listen, everybody, when things are dark, light shows up real good. You don't even have to have a lot of it, but just a little tiny bit, and people are going to find it. They're going fi- to seek after you even. In my darkest place, that's when I, I prayed to a God. I, did, I wasn't even sure he existed. When I got saved, I prayed, God, if you're real, rescue me, save me. And he did. And he did. And I've been living for him ever since. It was at my darkest place. So if this is a darkest place for so many people, how many more are right on the edge to say, in my darkest place, God, I need you? That's a really important, really important thing to remember. Stay positive. Lean into the discipline of seeing an opportunity in every obstacle. There's an opportunity in every obstacle. Last one is this. Number three is I want you to stay connected. This is what I'm calling the the spirit of love is to stay connected. I need you to, because I know the the world is telling us um, that we need to be socially distant. I want to change that language today. I want to change it to uh, physical distance. We're... We're, being, we're honoring our authority and we're doing what we need to do to keep physical distance so that, you know, sickness doesn't spread and whatnot, and we're going to do all that. But that does not mean we need to be socially distant. Not at all, in fact. I don't, I don't believe that's true at all. In fact, I would believe that socially, we might even be connected to people even better than we, than we had before. Before all this happened, there's people getting connected in all kinds of different ways. Um, we only need to obey the directive to be physically distant, but we need to lean into being socially close with one another. Let's read this scripture out of Ecclesiastes 4, and it goes like this. A person standing alone, al- if we are alone, and I, I'm, I'm talking about mentally, I'm talking about psychologically, I'm talking about isolation, being in a crowded room, but you're still alone. A person who's standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but two can stand back to back. You know, you like the, what's, is this like a Charlie's Angels thing? I, I'm, I should, okay, never mind. But two can stand back to back and conquer. And the next verse, the next part of it goes, three are even better. Like our life groups, we say, uh, two is a date, Three is a life group. <laughs> Two is a date. And dating is fine. And we're all good with dating and all as long as it's, you know, hands, hands are visible. But three are even better because, a lot of reasons, because a triple braided cord is not easily broken. Man, we, we, need to, we need to stick together right now. We really need to stick together right now. We need each other more than active, more than ever, to stay active and positive positive. But without us encouraging each other, we will be attacked and defeated. Um, I'm talking about new things that maybe you haven't even thought of before. Um, new ways to, to interact and engage. You know, even I've been, I've been doing some new things on, like, my social media stuff. I'm not usually into Instagram. But let me tell you, I posted on my story, like, six times this week. I've never even posted an Instagram story. Didn't know what it was. Didn't know how it was different. But you know what? I learned because I don't want to become disconnected from everybody. And so I'm learning to to do things differently so that I can stay connected with people. This is the season to to lean into maybe even some new technology. The light side of technology is it can really bring people together when we're separated like this. Um, So a couple options are this. Um, There's a couple different options to stay connected. Number one is texting and calling with each other. It's pretty basic. But I would encourage you to go through your lists, your contact list, and send out texts to people. Make calls to people. Um, 
actual phone calls and say, hey, how are you doing? Can I pray with you? Do all of that. In this season, it may sound like if you've been online a lot and if you're watching right now, you probably have been online plenty because you're tuning in live. And it may seem like there's a lot of that going on, but there's only as much as you are actually doing. Let me put it that way. So if you actually are texting and calling people a lot, then that's good. But if you're just hearing about people saying text and call a lot, then I, I would encourage you to, to really lean into that and text call people more than you have been before. Uh, downloading other apps such as Zoom. I hear great things about Zoom right now. They're giving their product away. Zoom is a video conferencing app that you can use. We're even considering using that for um, our life group semester coming up, our, our quarter that's coming up. We might use Zoom quite a bit just to still meet together but honor that physical distancing. Google Hangouts, if you're on Android, is really good. Um, Marco Polo is an app that's kind of like texting back and forth, but you can do it with video. And FaceTime. It's really nice to see people's faces every once in a while. You know what I mean? It's, it's one thing to get a text. It's another, it's another thing to get a call. But it's really great to be able to see someone's face, read their facial expressions, be able to, like tuning in live like this, listening to a podcast is one thing, but when you're able to see someone's face, that it connects you in a way that we were designed to stay connected. Remember, everybody, every obstacle is an opportunity. So this is even an opportunity for you to, to lean into some new apps or new, some new technology for you so you can stay connected with one another. Um, as, we, as we finish up our time together, I want to share a story about probably when I was the most unsure in my entire, well, not my entire life, but definitely after I got saved. Because when I got saved, I, the first job that I got was at a, a really great place. Um, I was waiting tables um, at this place, and I was doing that for a few years, and it was great, great money. Um, shouts to all my waiter and waitress friends out there. Um, I get you, I get you. I had this job and everything was going great. I was going to school. I was saving money. I was, you know, single, living, living alone uh, in my first couple years of being, you know, a, a Christ follower. And then one day, I lost my job. Just out of the blue. I went in thinking I had a job. And then I left a couple hours later with no job. And I... Let me just tell you, fear of what might be was setting in. My, my income was decimated. I'm living alone. My, I have no family that lives in the immediate area. I was thinking, uh, what, what am I going to do? How, how am I going to support myself? How am I going to live? And that's a story that might hit real close to home for some of you because of everything going on. And let me just tell you, it feels stinky. <laughs> it doesn't feel good. I was, I was definitely really nervous, but it was a Saturday. I remember this day. It was a Saturday, and so Saturday afternoon, you know, I, I went home and, you know, blew my nose and wiped my tears away, and I, I, I got up from there, and I thought, you know, I'm just going to head down to the church, <laughs> this church. This is the church I'd heard about, really wasn't coming to very much because I was working every Sunday. And I had down, it was Saturday afternoon, and Saturday services back then were not like in vogue, okay? So there was no service, but the doors were open. I'm like, huh. I went in, and there was round tables everywhere. They were doing like a calendar planning meeting. It wasn't very spiritual, okay? It was just regular people plugging stuff into their calendar. But what I've just plopped myself down, helped myself to some of their buffet, because I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to get food. I'm just going to eat, you know, everybody else's food. And I just... I just came to church, and then I remember feeling a lot better, you know, just being around the right people, and one thing leads to another, and I'm, I'm, I'm here every time the doors are open. I just come to the church, and then one thing leads to another. I, I, I decide not to take any job after that that's going to interrupt my involvement with my church. I got laughed out of some interviews over that. You know, I, I'm not going to work on Sunday morning. I'm not going to work on Thursday night, and I'm not going to work on it, and they're like... <laughs> That's cute. Yeah, bye. Whatever. If you're not going to work around my church thing, then I'm not, and I guess I don't need it. 
and I, one step after the other, and, and a few years down the road, Tiffany and I are, are now, this is my job now. But when I was in that moment of losing my job and having no prospects, it's really hard in a storm to have perspective after the storm passes. I, I know it's tough. I, I know it is. I've been through it. I felt that. I even feel it a little bit now. I'm like, oh, I'm not sure how things are going to pan out. I don't know if people are going to give. I don't know if everyone's going to show up after this is all done. Blah, 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 blah. We just don't know. What do we do? We take the next step, and we just put one foot in front of the other after God. And he always, every obstacle, every obstacle is an opportunity. If you would have told me losing that job was going to lead to me fulfilling my calling, there, there's no way I would have believed you. Because you would have been one of those weird spiritual people that I would have just ignored and been like, yeah, right, you're just blah, blah on me. All these years later, every obstacle is an opportunity. The Bible says it like this out of Romans 8. He says this, and we know, come on now, and we know that God causes, say it with me, everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. He, let me say it real slow. God says everything to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose for them. In the midst of a storm, in the midst of a storm, everybody, it's, it's really hard to see. I understand that. I do. And some of you are struggling right now. I'm not asking you not to have feelings. I'm asking you to trust God and know that he can use this. But what, but what does it say here? Called who love God and are called according to his purpose for them. How do we do that? Well, that seems like a really th good thing to talk about really fast. It begs the question, how do we love God? How do I know I'm loving God? The, the answer is Jesus. The, what are we doing with Jesus? That speaks to how we are actively loving God. Are you following him? Are you trusting him? Are you obeying him? In fact, Jesus says it himself this way out of John 14, 15. He says this, if you love me, obey my commandments. I'm just, just follow what I say to do. Just if you love me and if you want to be loving me, just, just trust me. Just trust me. And some people can read this a couple different ways. I've actually studied this phrase out quite a bit. And it has, it has the ability to work a couple different ways. Like, if you love him, then you'll obey his commandments. And if you obey his commandments, you're actively loving him. So you can almost flip that around, and it, it means just about the same thing. I won't bore you with the, with the Greek right now, but, but believe me. Believe me. This is, this is a lifeline for us. Because if we're not sure, we can be sure. Man, I, I just follow his commandments. I follow his word. I follow his way. I trust in him. And I know I'm actively loving him. And when I know I'm actively loving him, I know that God causes all things to work together for the good of those who love him, which is me, because I'm obeying his commandments. It's not God power tripping. Believe He's not power tripping on you. He's not, you know, you better listen to what I say. You know, it's not like that at all. It's like any good parent Hey, don't go run and play in the freeway. I'm not, it's a, a parent isn't power tripping when they tell their kids not to play in the freeway. They just love them. And they don't want them to get hurt. And they know what outcome will come of that. It's not a power trip. It's not God saying, well, you better do it. No, it's not like that at all. It's him loving us. He tells us, and, so what does he tell us to do? He does. He doesn't say explicitly, don't go play in the freeway. But what are some of the explicit things that he does say to do? Oh, I don't know. He tells us not to worry. He tells us to put others before ourselves. He tells us to seek first the kingdom of God and everything else is going to be added to us, to name a few. These are some of the things that Jesus, just, oh, these are my commandments. Seek me first. Just seek me. Seek me, you'll find me. Put others before yourself. 
Learn to love others, even above yourself. And that is you loving yourself. And don't worry about anything. Pray about everything. And we talked about that. that that's not saying you're not allowed to have feelings. It means in response to those feelings, I say, you know what? I'm going to trust my God. I'm going to trust God. You know, and if you're not following Jesus yet, you know what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to trust this God. I'm going to trust Jesus. I'm going to put my trust in him. And believe it or not, getting started in your relationship with him is, is simpler than you might think. It, it's simple. That doesn't make it easy all the time. Because it's as simple as, as, as giving him your heart, giving him your life, saying, Lord, I'm, I'm going to give myself to you. All right. This, this preacher said, taste and see. I, I don't know. What do I have to lose? Maybe I will taste and see. I'm promising you this. You take a step towards God, you'll be closer to him. He, he, he waits for you. He waits for you with open arms and a loving heart to say, come in, all of you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. I'm going to give you rest. Could anybody out there use a little spiritual rest today? If you've been experiencing unrest, I, I do feel for you. But we're going to pray in just a moment, and I'm going to give every single person listening an opportunity to start their relationship with Jesus. Or maybe your relationship with Jesus needs a restart. Maybe it needs a fresh log on the fire, or however you want to think about it. Maybe you just know you're not where you should be with him right now. Now's your chance. Now's your chance. So I'm going to ask you guys to do something. Everybody listening, everybody watching online. I don't care if you're watching in 2050 on YouTube 30 years later. Everybody listening to this message right now, I'm going to ask you to do something. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes with me. And I'm going to lead you in a simple prayer. Father, I ask for open hearts and open minds today. Lord, first of all, I pray peace over every single person listening to this message. Lord, I pray peace for them, that they would have rest for their souls, that they would have rest in their, in their racing minds. And Lord, I especially pray for every person who needs to get to right relationship with you, who needs a real relationship with you. Lord, I pray for open hearts and open minds right now. So with heads down and eyes closed, maybe you're sitting in a group of people. Don't worry about them right now. Maybe you're just all alone in front of your phone. That's all right. Keep in this attitude of prayer. And if you need to restart your relationship with Jesus or start it again or start it fresh or start it for the very first time, I want you to just pray a prayer like this in your heart, under your breath. You, know, you might be alone. You can pray as loud as you want. But it's going to sound something like this. So you can repeat it after me. You can say it with me. You can say it in your own words. But it's going to go like this. Father in heaven, I, I believe in you. I trust in you. Forgive my unbelief, Lord, when I struggle. But Lord, I'm giving you my whole life right here and right now. All my mistakes, all my trouble all my worry, even all my success, all the good stuff that I have. Lord, it's all yours. And Lord, I, I believe that your son, Jesus Christ, died on a cross for my sins and took the penalty that I could never pay on my own so that I could have eternal life with you in heaven. I, I give you my heart. Show me the way. I'm not perfect, but I want to be with you, God. Fill me with your spirit to overflowing. Light my path and show me the way. And then say, in Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Come on, everybody. I know I'm not going to ask you all to applaud here, but I want you to celebrate something from the privacy of your own home. Know this. Some people gave their life to Jesus just now, and maybe it was you. And if it was you, I want you to go ahead and send us a message, leave a comment, do something, do anything. This is normally where we would pass baskets around and have you fill out a connection card or do something like that. I don't care what you do, do it. 
leave a comment, send us a message. We will follow up with you. And know this, you take a step towards God, you'll be closer to him. So I'm so proud of you for making that decision. And we're about to end our service time together today. I'm so proud of you for, for praying that prayer. We can't wait to follow up. So as we bring this service to a close, um, I want to give everyone here an opportunity to continue worshiping God in their giving. Um, I know that might seem strange, like, well, I'm in my house. How can I do that? Well, there are still a couple ways, and I put them up here on the screen for you. Um, there's online. You can download our Church Center app and type in Lifeline, uh, and you can download our app, which has all of our it has all of our information on it, and there's also a way to give there. Um, you can go online to lifelinelodi.com slash give, or you can simply text, like this is how I do it. I, you know, if I do something and get a little extra money, I, mine's set up to come out automatically, so it, it gives when I don't even, when I'm sleeping, it gives. <laughs> so it works like that, but you just type this number, 84321, into the message, like who you're texting is 84321, and then you just type any number, 10, 20, 100, whatever it is, push send, and it will prompt you to set up uh, your giving that way, and then it'll send you a little, uh, thanks for giving. You know, so now it's all set up on my phone. I can, I type a 20, and it says, thanks, thanks for giving, and then it gives you a little confirmation. Um, you could also <laughs> give via check and send it to 500 Park Street, and we'll cash it one day. I don't know when, but we'll cash it one day. It's, it'll be great. Um, and so we're going to leave this up for you, and I want to pray a blessing over you before we go. So guys in the back, just go ahead and leave this up. Hey, before we finish up today, can we give it up for our worship team and production team? Give them like those clap hands. Those clap hands, yeah. Can you hear it? The digital clap hands. Yeah, it's good. Give it up for our team that, that's, you know, left their, their kids and wives at home for a couple hours to make sure that we have a service ready. Um, and next week, we are going to be doing it again. It's going to be even better. We're figuring a lot of things out right now. And so be looking forward to that. I want to pray a blessing over you. I want to pray a blessing over you before we go and just let you know right now that, uh, that God has something great for you. So if you would, right there in the quiet of your own home, just hold your hands out in front of you like this in a posture to receive, and let me pray this over you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray a blessing over every single person listening, Lord, that their relationships would be blessed, their health would be blessed, their finances would be blessed. Lord, that as we just put you at the center of all of those things, all our relationships, all of our hopes, all of our finances, everything, we put you at the middle of all of that. And we know that when we do that, <laughs> when we just seek you like I did, when I was a younger man, I just put my foot in a way that goes closer to you and everything will be great, Lord. In our relationships, in our health, Lord, I pray for swift healing for anybody who doesn't feel well. I pray for recovery of finances for anybody who's struggling. And I pray for any hurting relationships today. I pray these things in Jesus' name. Come on. Everybody said, amen. All right, God bless you. We're going to leave this up for just a couple minutes so you can see it. And we love you. God bless you. And we will see you next week.